In the early 1960s, the Soviet military wanted a more efficient modern mine clearance equipment that could quickly clear a wide enough safe path for vehicles such as tanks to pass through. OKB-174 Design Bureau proposed the Turbojet Mine Clearing Vehicle, which is the 604 project. The 604 project is not complicated. In simple terms, it used a tank chassis carrying two turbojet engines to blow the land with a strong air flow to clear mines. The T-55 tank chassis was used, with the front of the vehicle still being the driver's compartment, the middle turret being removed, and equipment such as fuel tanks being installed inside the vehicle. The rear of the vehicle was fitted with the engines, and the position of the support wheels was adjusted due to the change in the center of gravity. Two RPF-300 turbojet engines were installed side by side on the top of the vehicle, facing the front. The design was considered successful, but the prototype vehicle removed the front pipe and made changes to the shape and structure of the pipe connecting the engine nozzle, resulting in higher blowing efficiency. The 604 project had a two-person crew, with the driver on the left and both crew members having independent top hatches. Due to the awkward positioning, the driver had limited visibility and had to rely on the compass inside the vehicle to determine the direction of travel during mine clearance. The mine clearance vehicle had a certain level of armored protection, with the front armor thickness of 80 mm on the upper part and 60 mm on the lower part. The upper sloping part extended upwards to protect the crew, but with reduced thickness. The turbojet engines and other components had irregular armored shells, with a certain gap between the engine and the armor ranging from 20 to 60 mm. The 604 project was not equipped with weapons for self-defense, and the crew could carry rifles and hand grenades for necessary combat. The biggest threat to the crew was not external, but the enormous heat generated by the operation of the turbojet engines and the risk of fuel catching fire. Therefore, there were heat insulation materials and armored steel between the compartments, especially the fuel tanks inside the vehicle. There were two sets of fuel storage devices inside the vehicle, one for the tank engine and the other for the turbojet engine, which could hold 1,500 liters of aviation fuel. However, this amount of fuel was considered insufficient for the turbojet engine. During operation, the driver operated the 604 project at a speed of 3 to 4 km per hour, and the blown gas could turn over the soil to a depth of 30 to 50 cm on regular grassland, and up to 60 cm on snow. It could clear a 4 meter wide road, and the rear of the vehicle had marking equipment that would start after mine clearance, allowing subsequent units to determine which roads were safe based on the markings. The 604 project underwent testing in 1963, and its mine clearance capability was good. However, the fuel consumption was extremely high, with a single engine consuming 3.6 tons of fuel per hour in cruise mode, and even more in boost mode. The 1,500-liter fuel tank was only enough to sustain the continuous operation of two engines for about 10 minutes. During this time, the mine clearance vehicle could clear a distance of 600 to 700 meters before needing to refuel. Due to the high fuel consumption, the mine clearance vehicle was ultimately abandoned. 